It seems more often than not that in the games we play, there's always those moments that make us want to go back. And sometimes we give in to that temptation while our backlogs just give us that cold glare like your significant other after you said you'd do the dishes, but you did not do the dishes at all. You continue to replay that game because you were just so drawn in. Typically, it's because these games have what I like to call cool moments. And there is not a better game I can think of than Final Fantasy VIII, which is literally Nothing but cool moments all stitched together with a love story about you being the second option and amnesia. Anyway, there was a specific part about Final Fantasy VIII that I could just not get out of my head. It's the train heist. But the more I thought about that and everything that leads up to it, Final Fantasy VIII is really cool. I could just rapid fire off the reasons why, but then YouTube would punish me for doing so. But with all that said, let's get into it. For the first time in series history, Final Fantasy VIII starts off with an anime music video. You know, like the ones you used to download on Kaza or LimeWire and enjoy Dragon Ball Z music videos set to Linkin Park. Except this was 3D and well edited. In fact, Final Fantasy VIII predates those sketchy services by two years, so it was pretty ahead of its time. They also have the cool mysterious text floating above the screen, and awesome cuts back and forth between two anime swordsmen, gun swordsmen, fighting for the main waifu of the game. The opening mixed with one of the best songs from Uematsu's mixtape was so intense that it put Squall in the hospital. He's even visited by his hot. Hot teacher who just constantly tells Squall that he ain't shit. One really cool thing Final Fantasy VIII loves to do is mix in gameplay that flows seamlessly into full motion video. It really helps with the immersion and that was a feature that was also quite ahead of its time. When the game isn't busy having cool set pieces, you'll have some quiet moments that I like to call quiet moments that just show off how cool Squall is. But don't you worry, it's not long till you're back at the cool stuff. But before we can get to the seed missions, we have to first fight Ifrit. He's one of the first enemies you fight in the game if that doesn't clue you in how freaking awesome this is. Though he does go down really easy. The time limit really doesn't matter especially if you use the cheats provided to you. Listen, I'm old and I do not have the time to play fairly, especially when I'm handed these on a silver platter. But now that Ifrit is out of the way, it's time for the seed exam. Believe me when I say it's one of the best parts of the game. Squall gets paired up with his anime gunblade rival from the opening, a pun of social media before it was even a thing, and a chicken wuss. There's also sick action sequences paired with amazing music and sitting around. You know, Cypher is the real hero here. If it wasn't for his burning passion to fight for what he loves, then I would have to lean into this fast forward button even harder. So with the action finally progressing, we get more awesome stunts. But not to get my adrenaline pumping too much, I had to opt out of jumping off the cliff. Sometimes it's really cool just to stop and enjoy the sights while you're still young. Next you take this big cool elevator up to fight Biggs and Wedge. Mid battle this beast monster shows up, fight that too, win, get a 30 minute timer to fight a mechanical spider which is cooler than a mechanical scorpion from the previous entry. Big chase sequence ensues followed by the inspiration for Van Halen's 1984 hit song Hot for Teacher lighting up this spider like the New Year's sky. Now it's time to let some of that adrenaline just wear off. Or at least the game tried to tell me. I rented out one of their finest cars and started doing donuts outside at Baum Garden until I ran out of fuel. I imagine this moment was something that left quite the impact because it's later referenced in Final Fantasy XV. So we do more waiting around, I slap that fast forward button like you should be slapping that like and subscribe button, and find out to no one's surprise that we passed the seat exam. Well, not all of us. This will end well as it always does. Hey, they even clapped for us. You then receive your Devil May Cry ranking, which predates Devil May Cry, with all the sick nasty stuff you did from fighting Ifrit to the seed mission. This is brilliant because they're letting you know of this game's mechanic of if you're not cool enough, you're gonna receive a reduction in your clout salary. That's right, Final Fantasy VIII is about being a clout chaser. You even get to go to one of those parties that's filled with a bunch of social media influencers. Hey, he's the best looking guy here. Here is where the love story of Final Fantasy VIII begins to blossom. Actually, that's later because eyes on me aren't about these two. Anyway, have you seen Squall's dance moves? Ain't nobody like that getting their own love song. So after the big influencer party, we get our first seed mission. It's time to board up the train, but actually ride it on the inside like a normal person. Wow, look at that fancy cabin. I'm getting pretty. Running through this war-torn forest, our heroes Laguna, Kiros, and Ward. Wait, hold up. This song is my shit. 
Uh, anyway, Laguna is mainly on his way through this forest to head to Delling City. What for, you might ask? Mayhap it has something to do with Laguna's waifu. He comes to see Julia perform at his hotel to support his queen. But tonight is the night. Laguna is about to risk it all. He performs his mating dance to the rhythm of her music, and just like that, the Galbadian Chad is in her hotel room. Laguna inspires Julia to write the hit song, Eyes on Me, and then he heads out for a bit. Wow, I actually had a dream that I was much cooler than I am. So getting back to our amusement park ride of cool shit, this is the catalyst for the whole reason I decided to replay Final Fantasy VIII, the train heist. This moment blew me away back in 1999 and it still hides me up today. Once you arrive in the city, you meet up with the resistance at Contracted Seed. It's being led by no other than the person who was clout chasing at the influencer party, Renoa. The other two people are unimportant. One gets stomach cramps a lot and the other is, um, hmm. He's there. Kinda sad that the stomach cramp guy is more memorable than you, huh buddy? It was at this part of the game where I had to completely replay it on the PS4 remastered version, which was provided to me by Soldier First Class. I couldn't progress on the PC version because, what are these buttons? Anyways, the plan? Kidnap the Galbadian president via disconnected cars and juggle the decoy cabs so that the Galbadians are none the wiser. Very expensive setup just to kidnap someone. It would have been a lot cheaper just to raid the train instead. After a brief plan of the mission, we're ready to pull off one of the biggest heists since the 2020 election. All we gotta do is input the codes without getting caught and we're home free. Five codes and a couple of cool CG scenes later, we finally have the president. Except, this ain't the president. While we were playing checkers, they were playing 3D underwater chess. They left a decoy president that also turned into a zombie. Look buddy, if I wanted to play Resident Evil, I would be playing Parasite Eve 2 instead of this. Just throw a phoenix down at them and the fight is over. Kind of an anticlimactic way for me to end this amazing moment, but I've done worse things to be ashamed of over the years. Before I end everything, I would be remiss to talk about Triple Triad, one of the best parts of this whole game.